Subscribe to the Archivist 42 channel for gaming top fives, reviews and more. Hi people, it's Archivist here and today I'm going to be trying out a new series called Hindsight where I take a look back at some older games and determine whether or not they are still relevant in today's gaming world. Rather than going back to the retro era, I'm going to try and focus on games that are only a few years old. So to start off, we are going to be focusing on the city builder Anno 2070. When it comes to city builders, the objective isn't always exactly clear, and in the continuous game mode of Anno, this is very much the case. This lack of direction though works perfectly, to the game's advantage. Your first island represents a wealth of options, possibilities and avenues through which to construct your utopia. The first thing you will notice about Anno is how absolutely beautiful it is. The natural colours of the ocean and forest burst with personality. It's this initial impression that will encourage you to preserve the natural beauty of the environment. But before you set out to create your first town, you are faced with a choice. Do you want to be an industrious tycoon or a conservative eco-warrior? The two factions play in a similar fashion, however the way in which they impact the world itself varies. The eco-warriors work to keep the environment healthy, whereas the Global Trust Tycoons will harvest the land to gain the advantage. You can choose to go against the grain with the tycoons and look after the environment, however this does mean sacrificing many of their perks in the process. So, once you have chosen your faction, you are given an island on which to build your first settlement. You begin by creating a town centre which will act as the hub for your population. The next step is to establish a road network so that your people can reach the hub. And of course, people are going to need somewhere to live, so you are going to want to place as many houses as possible along the road network. Once these first steps have been completed, you must then think about your resources. There are many different resources in the game, but the three most important ones are money, modules and tools. Obtaining money is done by taxing your population. The more people you have, the more people you can tax. This provides an incentive to build as many houses as possible. Gaining building modules is done slightly differently depending on your faction. The tycoons will drill deep into the ground whereas the ecos will harvest only topsoil. Although the tycoon method takes up less space, it also has a greater negative impact on the environment. Both factions then take the granules obtained from these methods into a forge, which turns the granules into building modules. Tools are gained by mining coal and iron and then smelting them together. This can be a little tricky to set up, but once you do, your colony can become more or less independent. Once you have your basic resources, you must then attend to the needs of your people. This will vary depending on which faction you have chosen. Sometimes your people will want a particular commodity, and sometimes they will want to be in the proximity of a special building. After you have met all the needs of your people, they will then progress to the next social class. The visual impact of this is that your city will appear better developed as the buildings grow in size. Larger accommodations mean that more people can fit in a single house, and more people means more taxes. So, this idea of meeting your people's demands at each social level persists throughout the entire game. Once you have met the demands of the highest social class, your city is going to look very sophisticated. Similar to the most recent SimCity, you can't just expand the size of your settlement for as long as you like. And those worlds are split into islands, and so you are restricted to building your settlements on them. You are able to build underwater, but only in certain areas. Efficient planning is key to making sure that you maximise the space given to you. Luckily though, you can build on multiple islands at once. This can be helpful for establishing smaller colonies that are easy to manage while generating a fair amount of money. Anno is an excellent city builder, but it doesn't get nearly as much credit as it deserves. Most people tend to think of SimCity as the king of the genre, which annoys me as I've always believed Anno to be the superior series. Whereas the last SimCity game felt glitchy and at times even unfinished, Anno manages to deliver everything it promises and more. If you want a bit of narrative in the game, there is also a story mode, however, I prefer to carve out my own destiny in these sorts of games. The number of nuances and intricacies can at first make Anno 2070 feel overwhelming, but this really isn't the case. The tutorials do a great job of showing you what to do in the beginning, and the general user interface is not only intuitive, but also fits with the future theme perfectly. I think it's more than fair to say that Anno 2070 is not only still relevant more than two years after its initial release, but even surpasses its contemporaries. As always people, thanks very much for watching and see you next time.